I'm about to embarrass myself more than usual. 13 year old me loved the Ultimates, obviously excluding three. Sure, the politics and characterization of everyone were kind of fucked, but Brian Hitch's widescreen storytelling, the explicit contemporariness, it all blew my mind. However, all this was popularized by something else the authority. This video will cover the original Warren Ellis and Mark Millar run, because for some reason, Virgin Media just increased my internet bill. These comics have a reputation of being deplorable, so much so that my favorite Superman film is literally about criticizing them. I heard a child say that he wanted to be in the elite when he grows up because it would be fun to kill bad guys. So I can't emphasize how shocked I was to see it's not really. There's mass destruction, violence, and edgy stuff, like how Italy from a parallel Earth gets destroyed by our heroes, but it's not out of fun. There's no indulgence. It's more for me, we gotta do what's necessary motivation. Just look at everyone's faces afterwards. As a result, the main modern twist featured in these comics is the idea that wars involving superhumans wouldn't be clean. You don't win by following the rules and only do the right thing. You win by getting your hands dirty especially when your villains are so much more worse. That entire parallel Earth was invading theirs in order to turn it into one big rap camp. Therefore, I'd argue these comics don't really deconstruct the superhero genre. They're more about affirming them in an edgier way, because good is good, bad is bad. The authority are never really challenged or have much drama. They just cross the line and go home. I think one moment which really stood out to me was when Engineer talked about how she's gone over her personal flaws like drinking, sleeping with her ex and other stuff, cause someone had to fix everything and she's happy to do it while getting some nice views. This team isn't the elite. They're kind of wide-eyed and have good intentions. They feel like they're more from the Silver Age than the boys. And then the Mark Millar run then opens with the words, why do super people never go after the real bastards? And then I'm like, oh, this is where the reputation came from. Warren Ellis, and yes, I know about him, tends to write comics where I tend to have this reaction. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. In contrast, I react to Mark Millar's work like I do with Michael Bay. My guilty smile. These comics have a real apple nature to them. In other words, the wide-eyed idealism is replaced by heroes that are swearing, massacring people in ways that are indulgent. Villains also throw slurs like they're feeding birds. And we've gone from high concept science fiction with simple likeable characters to a deeply mean satirical world with crass characters. The weird thing is, I kind of dug this approach more. I don't know what that says about me. Notice how I've not introduced who's in this team or their powers. That's because I had no clue before this run. They just felt like archetypes. Midnighter was just a brooding one, but now he's this ex-military dude who's felt more loneliness from that life than we could ever imagine. And thus, he's actually kind of compassionate. Jack Hawksmoor isn't just the dude with black hair, but is an outspoken guy who believes in justice beyond what the establishment accepts. The engineer and the doctor aren't just the tech genius and the magician, they're both messed up people denied of their pleasures. Apollo isn't just Midnighter's boyfriend, but is the sensitive soul who experiences the worst f***ing things possible. Jesus, thanks Mark. And Swift isn't just the winged support character, She's also the wing support character. Consequently, this radically changes the premise and feel of these comics. Both runs do feature the authority having this one world, one people philosophy, but where Ellis used it to show the scale of the villains that no single one country can deal with and also highlight the idealistic nature of these reluctant heroes, Millar transformed this philosophy more into an act of protest. Here's Alex Lennon cameoing all the way from Australia with an important Mark Millar quote. The authority feels like a crusade to me at the moment. Superheroes have been useless for too long, let's make them mean something again. This is a poke at superheroes at both DC and Marvel. Why should they always fight for the status quo. Sometimes I'd just like to see what Lex Luthor could do for the world, you know? That was a lot more than I asked for, bro. The point is, the story is now all framed around anger. A frictious anger between doing the right thing versus what this system condones, which in turns lets this anger manifest itself in showing just how selective the right thing is in traditional politics. The ending of Millar's run literally features the G7 punishing the authority in ways I can't even describe because it's so f up, or because the gang's acts of unilateral humanitarianism has caused the rich puppeteering the politicians to lose a lot of money. Then after the heroes obviously beat them and their sanctioned replacements, we close on everyone dancing. 
When Engineer laments if they've made a difference, Jack confidently declares yes. They've set a new standard other superheroes who've disagreed with them now follow. People who can hear atoms won't be able to ignore the screams of third world countries or concentration camps. What the concept of the superhero is has changed. It's kind of a perfect full circle and a really explicit meta review over what the intended goal of this comic has been about. The Authority is a powerful wish fulfillment. In the same way people in the Great Depression wished for a hero to save them from douchebag landlords and social injustices, the Authority has done it on a big picture level. I think Grant Morrison summarised it the best. It was the utopian of Siegel and Schuster strained through British cynicism and delivered on the end of a spiked leather glove. It took the accusations of fascism that had haunted Superman and suggested a new kind of super fascist, one who was on our side. However, the Authority is also about pushing the superhero genre so it's forced to leave its own cartoony isolated bubble. It was so transgressive, so extreme, and was so popular that everything else around it had to somehow acknowledge it, be it from updating the way mass destruction is drawn to rebuking the comic's message. What's funny about Truth, Justice, and the American Way is a direct philosophical rebuttal of the Authority's brand of anarchy and authoritarianism, but that also meant Superman had to update himself with a clearer argument that could face the scrutiny of the 21st century. He had to follow in the direction, just as Jack Hawksmoor said. As a result, the Authority, despite being farcical, and I mean that because it's basically straight up black comedy by the end, featuring story choices so absurd and ludicrous that there's no way for anyone to take it seriously. It also represented an important bridge between millenniums. It's about smashing the superhero genre with exaggerated cynicism in order to let the genre self-moderate itself into a more evolved stage. One that wasn't so afraid. And in that sense, I'd argue these comics are actually pretty optimistic. You got me in the mood It feels like the sentence I really liked. Um, it's kind of like the boys, but instead of being corporate entities, they're actually activists. Like if that ginger kid and her mates from Falcon and the Winter Soldier were the heroes. And I really like the way I summarized it, but I didn't have anywhere else to put it. bad.